Hey folks, it's Grimwit from Natchevil, and with me today is Daster. Say hello, Daster. Hello. And uh, Daster, our question for today is, what are the great beards of history? <laughs> well, the puniest beard has at least Hitler. <laughs> Did he have a beard? Was that a beard on it, under his nose? Is that it why it... Like it was like he cut something off a toothbrush and glued it to his face. He cut off a beard, a toothbrush beard. Yeah. <laughs> the same kind Charlie and Chaplin was uh, having. <laughs> are these beards or mustaches? I think those are mustaches. <laughs> yeah. It, he still ruled pretty bad. Uh, when does this need to be done? Oh, yay, this is uh, a nighttime job. Oh, this will be fun. Take the job. Um, I was thinking like Blackbeard the pirate who was a freaking badass and and put sticks of dynamite into his beard. Or no, yeah, it was it was candles, wasn't it? Yeah, something like uh, fuses from you would use in dynamite, but uh, put him just uh, wrapped up, up uh, differently so he doesn't burn his, his beard off. It's my guess, at least. <laughs> that was an awesome beard. I'm trying, to yeah. think of, I'm trying to think of other beards because I haven't had much time to think about beards. This time you have me at a disadvantage. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. Beards, beards, beards. Uh, the devil? No, damn it. <laughs> I don't even know if he has a beard anymore. But he shaved it. <laughs> <laughs> seems to me... It seems to me... Oh, oh, whoa, what is happening here? I am experiencing major lag. Oh. That's okay. never happened before on Euro Truck. Hmm. <laughs> well, how about the famous beard of Abraham Lincoln? Oh, no, there's a beard. Although, yeah. he also had a really awesome hat, which kind of looked like an, an upside down beard. Okay, I know what my rabbit is. Abraham Lincoln had one of those, like, um, Amish beards. Where, where I am, you see a lot of Amish people. Man, they've got beards. They, they look fake, and you know that they aren't. <laughs> I have a real fake beard. A real fake beard. A, a yeah. fake real beard. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's basically, you've seen, you, you know Abraham Lincoln's beard, of course. Now imagine yeah. that, imagine walking into a market and everybody has that beard, including some of the women. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're proper least... Amish, they don't shave. <laughs> well, at least they are not freezing in winter. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, the Amish are kind of inter interesting to me. I, I'm from the middle of America in, in Oklahoma, and they don't have any Amish in Oklahoma, so moving here was kind of a culture shock, because sometimes you're driving a car, now this is mostly in Pennsylvania, which is one state over, sometimes you're driving a car, and there's a horse and buggy just in the middle of the road, with a little, uh, a little warning traffic sign attached to the back of it saying, please don't crash into the back of my buggy. It's, it's a little bizarre. Well, where I'm living in Germany, it's like a little a small village or something. Well, there are just uh, only like uh, many living houses for, uh, for private persons. So, uh, One time we had uh, uh, someone with a horse and a um, cart uh, behind it too crossing here. He was like taking some people on the ride for a little bit and that's it. Rides are fine. Yeah. This this guy was going to work. <laughs> Probably. It's that that 20 minute commute of like two miles. <laughs> now that I'm remembering, um, when I took my uh, exam for uh, in English, I actually had as a uh, thematic uh, Amish people and their uh, uh, cultural. Uh, I nailed it pretty hard with a uh, with a straight A. Wait, 
was it a cultural class or a uh, or a language class? It was a language class. Okay, I didn't realize the Amish had an individual uh, kind of English. No, it's just it was just um, normal English class, but uh, they gave uh, different kinds of uh, themes for uh, each pupil they had. To, uh, they wanted to uh, exam them in. Oh. So like one had like I don't know Oklahoma's I don't know whatever, and other people had like Amish people like me or even different things. So I don't ask everyone what they had. No, oh. English is one of those things that has tons of little dialects. There are some forms of English in America that I can't understand. There's um, in Louisiana. There's a group of people called the Cajuns, okay. and they are a kind of a Creole French English, and they are really hard to understand. But they make excellent food, and uh, it's somewhere near uh, Maryland. I cannot remember their name, but my wife does. There's another kind of English on an island. And when they talk, nobody understands them unless they're from that island, so... <laughs> in, in Oklahoma, we're just too relaxed. We're just like... The, the trick to talking like an Oklahoman is to first off, slow down. And you, you gotta let your jaw slack a little. Like when you're on wheat? <laughs> like you're chewing a, a piece of a wheat. So that one side of your mouth doesn't doesn't move much, like Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> like, <laughs> head up onto the tractor. We're gonna drive all the way to 7-Eleven and see if we can't get a drive-through or make a drive-through. <laughs> anyway, uh, over up here, however, in Maryland, they talk very fast because they don't got time for nothing, and nobody got time for nothing. Well, I'm uh, mostly in a hurry too, um, when I am just like, most people don't understand me in my class when I am uh, really ferociously to uh, talking English because the thematic we are uh, currently having is really exciting for me. Oh, hey. So you're, still yeah. in, so you're still in English class. You said you were in a vocational school, I think, at once? Yeah, but uh, we still take normal lessons. We just have uh, an extra uh, lesson we take where we learn about electrical impulses in computers and such. It's not that advanced, uh, advanced in the state I am currently, but it's like three extra years I'm going to take, so... Oh, that's cool. Hey, and as a bonus, you can uh, you can tape an epic beard to whatever electronic device you're, you've, you've got there. <laughs> uh, basic, so, yeah? well, I was about to ask, are there dialects of German? Because I don't know anything about German. When, when Americans think of German, we don't really think of the different kinds of German that can be speak, spoken. Or, uh, well, I'm, I'm too ignorant to, to, to try and guess what kind there are. I imagine there are some people that talk a different kind of German than others, though. Yeah. Like, oh, well, it's a pretty, pretty big uh, difference, and it's not exactly Germany. Like, uh, difference between um, uh, Austria and Germany. Some people talk, uh, have a like, like a little um, accent there. And there's even something more extreme, like between Swiss and um, Germany. I, I've watched Swiss TV channel once. It was pretty. It was. I had to like. A, custom to it like thing they speak the same in TV shows because probably uh, in Germany they are getting like synced but the um, and I lost the word for um, let me advertising yeah the, the advertising in and Swiss is on Swiss German and that's well something for itself all ads are. Uh, if I'm lucky, I can get a uh, a Mexican channel on cable, and those are just the best. <laughs> Univision, because the uh, it's the only time I actually prefer commercials, because I usually hate commercials. 
commercials. But if it's in another language, it's hilarious. <laughs> Especially if they're advertised with the same kind of things I'm used to seeing advertised. So I like to see how, like, Nutella is advertised in Mexico. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Gotta slow down the truck here. Let's make sure we don't crash. You better not. Crashing is fun. Well, yeah. Pro uh, even more if you can do it expertly. <laughs> Expert crashing. I like that. I'm sure there's a uh, there's a vocation for that. Crashing for dummies or crashing 101. I like crashing for dummies. Crashing <laughs> for crash test dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Back on beards. Let yeah. me see here. What great, great, ah, now, now it's lost me. I can't think of great beards, because my, like, I'm immediately trying to think of presidents with awesome beards, and there aren't many. Like, Abraham Lincoln had a great beard, and that was it. He's the only guy with a beard that I can think of. <laughs> my favorite well, president didn't have a beard. He had a great mustache, though, and that was uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, Teddy. Ah, uh, Teddy. Now that was a mustache, but no beard. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, what about Zack? Uh, I can't pronounce that name. It's Greek. That one actor from uh, hang uh, Hangover. Oh, Gilifinakis. Yeah. I wonder that it's it's this astonishing me that you can't pronounce it so fast. Well, it's because his name is often in the news, like celebrity news or whatever, so I hear it a lot. So it's just... <clears throat> uh, Gila Fan Akis. Gila Fan Akis. And uh, it's... You just hear his name. I mean, like, a lot of... When, uh, when Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure came out in the 80s, nobody could say Keanu Reeves Keanu was a weird name, and it still is. <laughs> but since he's been in the news so often, like celebrity news, and people have seen his name in so many movies, now everybody knows how to say Keanu. And that's a pretty pretty normal thing. You get a lot of weird names, especially from celebrities, and then after time, people can just say it, and say it right, because they've been on talk shows, and people crowd around the... Uh, What's a, what's a great name? I'm trying to think of a great name. Gilifanakis is a fun one, but I think <clears throat> Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> is my favorite celebrity name. It is so overly British. It, it feels like you're summoning the queen. It feels like an eldritch word. Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so, like... <laughs> It's like what? It's like if you say it three times fast in a mirror, he's going to magically appear behind you. <laughs> like Beetlejuice. <laughs> Stand in front of the mirror, turn off the lights, and say Benedict Cumberbatch three times, and you will gain a deer hat. <laughs> <laughs> My own Bloody Mary myth. I'm putting it out right now, that's the myth. Say Benedict Cumberbatch three times in the mirror in the dark. Something uh, British will happen. <laughs> You're going to turn into the onion Jack. <laughs> okay, um, I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, I have been driving through Germany for a while, and I see s road signs that say, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, because it comes off a little juvenile, Osfart? Ausfahrt. A U S F A H R T. Yeah, it's Ausfahrt yeah, pronounced. It's like exit, or you know. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! I was looking for this town forever. <laughs> and I'm like, where's Ausfahrt? How come I can't find Ausfahrt? That sounds like an awesome town to be in. <laughs> I want to go there. <laughs> Well, it seems like they had to um, translate the signs as well. 
from? No, there's no translation. No? <laughs> but this is the only uh, country where I see exit signs. Again, this, this must be a German game. <laughs> and they just yeah. translated it to different languages. It's, I mean, it's Euro Truck, so it's got translations for all kinds of different languages. But <laughs> there's no other country that has exit signs. Only Germany. Hmm. Well, we have to point it out to some people. Um, by the way, um, yeah, I think it's in, uh, made in a German game because mainly you mainly drive. Uh, draw, uh, draw shit drive around in Germany and such. Well, I saw you once go to Prague too, so... Oh yeah, I... there's... My my wife's Polish, so every time I uh, I enter into a Polish country and she sees, she's like, Ooh, ooh, I know that place! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I how? You, you've never lived there! How do you even... Uh... Well, I gotta start wrapping this up. Whoops, whoops. Uh, I can't see where I am. I was gonna try and park like a man, but once again I have to cop out because I, I don't even know where where I am. <laughs> uh, hey, there we go. I made 10,000 pounds because I... fuck euros. Yeah. Hmm. I, th I think pounds are actually more worth than euro. Um, probably. Uh, and, and then bitcoins are just going to screw everyone economy over. Alright, well Daster, that was an awful, awful lot of fun. Uh, I think that's all the time we have for now, and thank you for coming by, stranger. <laughs> well, Anna is on my side. It was okay being on the show. Hey. Well, uh, maybe you can come back sometime. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll see him into that. <laughs> Well, that's that's all. I'm um, I'm gonna call it a video here and uh, say say good night, Daster. Good night. Bye, everyone. Hey, do you have Skype? Want to be on the show? Want to help replace all billboards with pictures of fish? Shoot a message to natchevil at gmail.com. Don't forget to include truck in the subject so I know it's from you. And thanks for watching.